Want to speak real Polish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at polishpod101.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Polish Top Words. So today we will learn top 25 Polish verbs. Bitch. To be. Bitch. Bitch actually means to be. So, yeah, you can say like um, bitch albo nie bitch which just means to be or not to be. And uh, of course, in Polish, all those verbs will be changing, depends on the person. So for example, um, if I want to say I'm happy, I would just say jestem szczęśliwa. Lubić. To like. Lubić. Lubić means just to like something, so whenever you're asking somebody what do you like or or you want to say I like this uh, you would use this verb of course change it uh, depending on on the person for example you can say uh, lubisz lody do you like ice cream robić to do robić robić means to do so um, you can say, um, what are you doing today? Co ci robisz? Mówić. To say. Mówić. So when you translate it to English, it just means to say. You can get angry at somebody. Nie mów takich rzeczy. Which means, don't say such things. Wyjaśnić. To explain. Wyjaśnić. Wyjaśnić means to explain when you're angry at somebody or, or you don't understand something or you want to ask for help and you want to say, can you explain this? You can use this one and you can say, możesz to wyjaśnić? Can you explain this? And depends on your tone, it can be asking for a favor. Możesz to wyjaśnić? Or, or it can be getting really angry at somebody and, and just willing them to, you know, uh, explain why they did it and say, Możesz to wyjaśnić? Słyszeć. To hear. Słyszeć. Słyszeć means to hear in English. And for example, you can say, Słyszałam, że tu mają dobre pierogi. I've heard they have good dumplings here. So, if you're a girl, you would say słyszałam, I've heard. If you're a guy, you would say słyszałem. So słyszałam, słyszałem. It will change a little bit depending on the gender. You can basically take this sentence and put something different at the end and use it as a kind of set phrase. Słyszałem, że, słyszałam, że. Iść, to go, iść. Iść means to go, so when you want to ask your friend, where are you going, you can say, gdzie idziesz? Wiedzieć, to know, wiedzieć. Wiedzieć is translated to English as to know, and it is a little bit tricky verb, because people often confuse it with, with another verb, znać, and both actually are trans translated as, as, as to know uh, into English. So, for example, you can say nic nie wiem. I do not know anything. Nic nie wiem. I do not know anything. Widzieć. To see. Widzieć. Widzieć means to see. So, if you saw like something very weird on the sky, like um, something that looks like a plane and it's not, and, and you are not sure if you are actually seeing it or not, you can ask your friend if he or she is seeing it too, saying, Widzisz to? You see this? Przyjść. To come. Przyjść. To come. For example, you are at the party and you want to know who is coming. So, you ask your friend, who is the organizer? Kto przyjdzie na przyjęcie? Who is coming to the party? Myśleć, to think. Myśleć. This one is pretty important since it means to think. 
when you go shopping with your best friend and you are trying on different clothes and then, you know, you see her in a very, very nice dress, you can say, Myślę, że ci to pasuje. I think it suits you. Patrzeć, to look. Patrzeć, which means to look. So, for example, you can say when you saw something weird and you want to show it to your friend or something interesting. Popatrz tam. Look there. Chcieć, to want. Chcieć, which means to want. If you have everything you wa ever wanted and, and you don't want anything anymore, uh, you can say Niczego więcej nie chcę, which will literally mean I do not want anything more. Dać, to give, dać. Dać means to give. So when you go out and you meet this nice guy or cute girl and you want to ask them for the email address, You'd ask them uh, using Dutch. Dash mi swój email. Will you give me your email address? Używać. To use. Używać. Używać means to use. When you see this thing that you've never used before and you want to say, okay, can you help me because I've never used it, you can say, nigdy tego nie używałem. Means I've never used it before. Or, nigdy tego nie używałam. If you are a guy, you would say, używałem. If you are a girl, you would say, używałam. Znaleźć, to find. Znaleźć. Znaleźć means to find. Imagine your friend brought you a nice dress, uh, and which we are going to wear at a party, but you don't really like it. It doesn't suit you well, and you want to ask uh, her to find you something better. So you can say, Może uda się znaleźć coś lepszego? Which means, maybe we can find something better. Wychodzić, to go out. Wychodzić. Wychodzić means to go out. It's actually a verb that consists of two parts, which are written together. So, wy means like outside. And chodzić means like to walk. So wychodzić means to walk outside, which is just go out. For example, let's imagine you live with your friend and she is going out somewhere and you want to ask her what time are you going out. You can say, o której wychodzisz? Zapytać, to ask. Zapytać. Zapytać means to ask. Sometimes when you want to ask for something uh, which is very difficult to ask for and, you know, just to be nice, you want to uh, say, like, uh, can I ask you something? In Polish you can say, czy mogę cię o coś zapytać? Or you can even ask, excuse me, can I ask you something? Przepraszam, czy mogę cię o coś zapytać? Pracować, to work. Pracować. Pracować is an interesting word. It actually means to work. So you can use it when you want to say, I have never worked in such a company. Nigdy nie pracowałam w takiej firmie. Or if you are a guy, you would say, Nigdy nie pracowałem w takiej firmie. Wejść. To enter. Wejść. Wejść means to enter or, or to come in. Well, when your friend visits you and you want to just say, please come in, please, or just, you know, you can say, wejdź proszę, which means literally, come in, please. Czuć, to feel. Czuć, to feel. This one can be pretty useful if you want to say that you do not feel well today and you want to skip work or, or skip your classes or just cancel some appointment, you can say źle się dzisiaj czuję, which means I'm feeling bad today. Próbować, to try. Próbować. Próbować means to try. Let's say your friend is visiting and you made this wonderful food, amazing dishes, and you want him or her to try it. Uh, you can invite them saying spróbuj to, which means try it. Zostawić, to leave. 
zostawić. Zostawić means to leave when you are angry or irritated and you don't want people to talk to you and just like, just leave me alone, please. Uh, you can say, zostaw mnie w spokoju, zostaw mnie w spokoju, which means leave me alone. Zadzwonić, to call, zadzwonić. So, zadzwonić means to call. And let's say somebody calls you uh, and you cannot really talk right now, so you want to say, okay, I will call you back later. You just say, zadzwonię potem, I will call later. Biegać, to run, biegać, to run. <laughs> if, if you are not one of those sporty person and you don't really run, like running, or running is totally not your thing, and you want to say, you know, uh, well, friends invite you, but, but you are like, ah, sorry, that's not really my cup of tea. Uh, and you want to say, um, sorry, I don't like running. You can say, nie lubię biegać. Nie lubię. Or just say, lubię. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching Top 25 Polish Verbs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave your comments. And for more videos and more vocabulary, go to polishpod101.com. Thank you again and see you next time! Hi everybody, I'm Marzena from polishpod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Polish? In this lesson, you will learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Kocham cię. Kocham cię. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you are confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Znaczysz dla mnie tak wiele. Znaczysz dla mnie tak wiele. It means you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. Mojej miłości do ciebie nie da się wyrazić słowami. Mojej miłości do ciebie nie da się wyrazić słowami. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Polish. And here is one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case you say Będziesz moją walentynką? Będziesz moją walentynką? It means Will you be my valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we have learned. Listen to the expressions and repeat after me. I love you. Kocham cię. Kocham cię. You mean so much to me. Znaczysz dla mnie tak wiele. Znaczysz dla mnie tak wiele. Words cannot describe my love for you. Mojej miłości do ciebie nie da się wyrazić słowami. Mojej miłości do ciebie nie da się wyrazić słowami. Will you be my valentine? Będziesz moją walentynką? Będziesz moją walentynką? Well done! Here is a fun fact. 
Do you know the other name for Valentine's Day in Polish? In Poland, there are two names for February 14. The one, which is a translation of Valentine's Day, is Valentynki, but there is also Dzień Zakochanych, which means Amorous Day. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Polish and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. Also, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet on how to be a good lover in Poland, including words for romance, compliments and pick-up lines. Check out the description below and go to polishpod101.com now. I will see you next time. Do zobaczenia! Go away. For someone... <laughs> now, if you want to be... No, it's just... <laughs> okay, let's go. Skinika matte wosiokio. Kości do ciebie. For my Valentine's Day in Polish. Oh, it's a fun fact. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> you ruined it for me. A linguist is telling you that. I know what I'm saying. Why don't you see it? Why? <laughs> I knew you will notice. Valentine. <laughs> no way. Okay. Ooh. Well, done. well done. Hello everyone and welcome to Polish Top Words series. My name is Marzena and today we will learn 15 favorite words chosen by fans. So let's start. Szczęść. Beetle. Uh, so the first word is and I promise you, this is the most difficult word you will ever learn in Polish, as for the pronunciation, is chonszt. I will just say it again, chonszt, which means beetle. Yeah, so we use it a lot for, for tongue twisters. Like, for example, a very famous one is chonszt brzmi w szczycinie, w szczebrzeszynie, which means beetle sounds in the reeds in a tongue called Szczebrzeszyn, which makes it even more difficult to say. Szczęść brzmi w szczycinie w szczebrzeszynie. Ah, oh, yeah, that was correct. Córka, daughter. Córka. Córka means uh, daughter. And uh, if you want to say like your little, little uh, daughter, you can say córeczka, which is a bit sweeter way of, of calling your daughter. If your daughter is studying Polish, uh, you can say Moja córka uczy się polskiego, which means my daughter is learning Polish. Cześć. Hello. Cześć. Which basically means hello. And for example, if you meet your friend, you can say Cześć, jak się masz? Hi, hello. Hi, how are you? Cześć, jak się masz? Just be prepared to hear the very, very long answer for the part, how are you? Ile to kosztuje? How much is this? Ile to kosztuje? How much is this? So you go to a shop and, and you see an item and there is no price tag, which still can be pretty common. And you want to ask, um, how much is this? You just say, ile to kosztuje? And a good answer for that would be, for example, 35 zł i 20 groszy, which means 35 zł and 20 groszy. Kochać, to love. Kochać, that one is very good for Valentine's Day. So kochać means to love. And for example, you know, you love your sweetheart, but sometimes you don't really understand this person. So you can say like, kocham cię, ale czasem cię nie rozumiem. Which means I love you, but sometimes I don't understand you. Kolega. Friend. Kolega. Kolega means a friend. Now, there is very funny thing in Polish because we have another word. It's przyjaciel. We translate przyjaciel as a friend as well. But przyjaciel is a better friend. Kolega, it can be used as colleague in English, so it doesn't have to be very close friend. And it's always about guys. For a girl, you would say koleżanka. So kolega for guys and koleżanka for girls. 
if you want to introduce somebody and say still that this person is your very, very good friend, you can say, to jest mój najlepszy kolega. This is my best friend. And if this friend happens to be a girl, you can say, to jest moja najlepsza koleżanka. Niespodzianka. Surprise. Niespodzianka. Niespodzianka means a surprise. And this noun is actually very, very uh, funny because it, it comes from two different words. Uh, so nie, which is basically a negation, means no. And spodzianka, it's from spodziewać się, which means to expect something. So it's like not expecting something or something that is not expected, which basically gives you a surprise. For example, imagine that um, you are in this long distance relationship with your girlfriend and then she doesn't say anything and she just comes to you uh, with no notice and you open the door and you're very surprised to see the her there and then you say a to mi zrobiłaś niespodziankę oh you sure surprised me polska poland polska polska means well poland so if you want to say that poland is in central europe you can say polska leży w europie centralnej spać sleep Okay, so the next word is spać, which means to sleep. And for example, when you meet your friend in the morning and you want to ask, like, did you sleep well? Uh, in Polish, we would say, wyspałaś się, if that's a girl, or wyspałeś się, if that's a guy. I know that this wyspałaś się doesn't really sound like spać because we attach wy in front of it, but it actually is the same verb. Again, for a girl, you can say wyspałaś się, did you sleep well? Or for a guy, wyspałeś się. Super, awesome, super, awesome. And let's say you found out that your best friends are dating and you are so happy and you say like, super, to kiedy ślub? Awesome, so when is the wedding? <laughs> Szczęśliwy, happy. Okay, so the next word is szczęśliwy, <laughs> which basically means happy. Well, let's go back to this Valentine's Day and when you are with your sweetheart and you want to say how happy you are with him, you can say ah, jestem z tobą bardzo szczęśliwa, which means I'm very happy with you. And this is something that a girl would say. If you're a guy, you just have to change this last part. Szczęśliwa, szczęśliwy. Pływać, to swim. Pływać. Pływać means to swim. If you go to the seaside with your friends and, and you want to tell them, you know, I, I'm not so good at swimming, so <laughs> please watch me. <laughs> and before something happens, you just say, nie umiem dobrze pływać, which literally means I can't swim well. Zdrowy, healthy. Zdrowy. Zdrowy means healthy. And there is this very common Polish saying that you can use. It's uh, w zdrowym ciele, zdrowy duch. Which means in a healthy body, a healthy mind. Oczywiście, of course. Oczywiście. Oczywiście means of course. Actually, a lot of my friends who are learning Polish, they say that this one is their favorite. And if somebody asks you for a favor and you want to say, but of course I will do it for you, no problem, of course. You can say, ależ oczywiście, but of course. Do zobaczenia później. See you later. Do zobaczenia później. And it means see you later. When you are going back home, you want to say bye to your friends, coworkers, classmates or anybody else. You can say, no to do zobaczenia później. Well, see you later. Thank you for watching 15 favorite words chosen by fans. My name is Marzena and if you like this video, please leave a comment and give us thumbs up. And if you want more videos or more vocabulary, please go to polishpod101.com. See you later. Do zobaczenia później. Want to speak real Polish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at polishpod101.com. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Marzena and welcome to 
uh, Polish top words. Today we will learn 10 questions you should know in Polish. So let's start. Jak się nazywasz? What's your name? Jak się nazywasz? What is your name? So if you meet somebody and you ask this person jak się nazywasz, you may hear an answer like Nazywam się Ania. My name is Ania. Ania is actually a pretty common name in Poland. Or Nazywam się Marzena. My name is Marzena. Jak się masz? How are you? Jak się masz means how are you? And you may hear an answer like dobrze, which means good. But actually, probably more often you will hear a very, very long answer and it won't be good. Because in Poland, it is not so common to ask, you know, jak się masz. You, you, you do ask that, but you ask that only, you know, people you are very close friends with. And you kind of need to expect a longer answer and, and that people will actually tell you the truth about their life and what wrong happened in it. And it, it's usually wrong because Polish people love complaining. So be careful with this one. If you don't have time for a longer talk, just don't ask it. Skąd jesteś? Where are you from? Skąd jesteś? Where are you from? So you may hear this question if somebody notices that you are not from Poland. And for example, if you are from America, you can answer z Ameryki, from America. So basically you just put z and then the country. Kiedy masz urodziny? When is your birthday? And if you make new friends, you may hear a question like Kiedy masz urodziny? Which means, when is your birthday? And a good answer for that would be just giving, you know, the month and day. You don't have to answer in a whole sentence. So you can say, for example, Usmego lutego. Usmego lutego, which is February 8th. This is actually my birthday. Gdzie mieszkasz? Where do you live? Another question you may hear is Gdzie mieszkasz? Gdzie mieszkasz? Gdzie mieszkasz means where do you live? And when you can answer like in details, telling the street, saying the street and everything else, or you can just, you know, say Mieszkam w Krakowie, which means I live in Krakow. Gdzie pracujesz? Where do you work? Another one, another question you, you may hear in Poland is Gdzie pracujesz? Where do you work? And it can be about the place or, or it can be about the company. So, for example, if you don't want to say the company or you are like, you know, reluctant, you just want to say, okay, I work in Krakow, you say Pracuję w Krakowie. If you want to say the company, on the other hand, you can just say Pracuję w and change Krakowie, Krakow, to the name of a company. Jaki jest twój numer telefonu? What's your phone number? <laughs> if somebody likes you really much, then they may ask about your phone number, saying, Jaki jest twój numer telefonu? What is your phone number? So you can answer that saying, Mój numer telefonu to 693 408 896, which means my number is 6934088896 just um, notice that in polish we usually break it into like groups of three and we say not 693 we say 693 which is 693 gdzie się nauczyłeś polskiego where did you learn polish now, because studying Polish is not so common and you don't actually learn it at school in a lot of countries, you may hear a question, Gdzie nauczyłeś się polskiego? Where did you learn Polish? Well, you can answer, for example, w szkole językowej, which means in language school. Czy lubisz polskie jedzenie? Do you like Polish food? Another question you may hear as a foreigner is, of course, do you like Polish food? Which in Polish is Czy lubisz polskie jedzenie? Czy lubisz polskie jedzenie? 
you know, you can answer whatever you want, like if you like it, uh, if you don't like it, don't, don't feel, you know, like embarrassed and, and just say it straight because people will just feed you with Polish food that you don't like. But if you like it, you can say uwielbiam, which means I love it. Kiedy przyjechałeś do Polski? When did you come to Poland? Now, once you come to Poland and you start living there, you will probably hear this one a lot. <laughs> Kiedy przyjechałeś do Polski? When did you come to Poland? So, if it's like for you three years, you can say Przyjechałem do Polski trzy lata temu. I came to Poland three years ago. And that's all for today. We learned 10 questions you should know in Polish. Thank you for listening. And remember to like this video and uh, to check polishpod101.com. Thank you again and see you next time. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Hello everyone, welcome to Top Polish Words. Today we'll do 10 compliments you always want to hear. So, my name is Marzena, and here we go. Number one is... Jesteś przystojny. You are handsome. Ah, oh, jesteś przystojny. <laughs> So, you are handsome or jesteś przystojny, you will use it to guys, not so much to girls. For girls you can say like ładna, piękna uh, or something close to that. And I believe every single guy in Poland would be very, very happy if you tell him that. Jesteś niesamowitym przyjacielem. You are an awesome friend. So, jesteś niesamowitym przyjacielem is something I would tell to my like very very good friend because you use the word przyjaciel and we have uh, two words for friends in in polish so kolega or koleżanka uh, we use when we refer to a friend that is not a very very close friend but f when we say uh, when we talk about a very very close friend we will say przyjaciel or sometimes przyjaciółka which refers to a girl so przyjaciel przyjaciółka Jesteś niesamowitym przyjacielem. You are an awesome friend. Twoje wnętrze jest jeszcze piękniejsze niż twój wygląd zewnętrzny. Your inside is even more beautiful than your outside. Which is a great compliment to say to a girl. Or even a guy in Poland, but I, I believe a lot of my friends would be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh, I'm so happy. 
And uh, yeah, why not? Why not to make people happy? So you can use that one. Twoje CV jest imponujące. Your resume is impressive. Um, yeah, you can say that about somebody's CV if you feel like it's really good, good person. It's like uh, they, they have this impressive resume and they are so good. Uh, but also, um, you can use instead of CV, uh, you can use the word, Polish word, życiorys. Życiorys. Um, which basically uh, is the history of your life, which is CV as well. Uh, we, we use both. We use CV, we use życiorys. Uh, you can use one on the or the other, um, both are okay. And what if somebody uh, does a good job or great job? Well, in that case, you can say dobra robota, dobra robota. You can use it to your friend or you can use it at work to your coworker. Mm, well, I, I guess you, you wouldn't say it to your uh, boss, but everybody else is okay or maybe not to your teacher. Uh, but every, everywhere else, it's, it's a good way to, to price somebody. Ta kurtka wygląda na tobie ładnie. This jacket looks nice on you. And who wouldn't like to hear that? Um, I guess it's a very nice thing to say, especially among the girls. So if you have a girlfriend, uh, you can tell her that, you know, this jacket looks nice on you. Or, or you can say, oh, this skirt looks nice on you. Ta kurtka, ta spódnica. Um, te korale, um, which is like this uh, necklace, uh, or uh, for example, ta czapka, which is like this hat. Wygląda na tobie ładnie. Looks nice on you. Wygląda na tobie ładnie. Looks nice on you. Twój uśmiech jest piękny. Your smile is beautiful. Which, um, I guess a guy can say it to a girl. Definitely, uh, probably more often than a girl would say that to a guy, and that's a very big compliment. I always feel like, oh my gosh, oh my, your smile is so beautiful, oh. <laughs> and I would be probably super red. <laughs> Wyglądasz przepięknie. You look gorgeous. Um, this is something uh, probably a boyfriend would say to his girlfriend, and sometimes I would say it to my girlfriends as well just to make them feel better and when they look really, really gorgeous, I would say Oh, wyglądasz przepięknie. You look gorgeous. Jesteś niezastąpiony. You are irreplaceable. Jesteś niezastąpiony. Something you will say to a guy and to a girl, you will just change it a little bit and you will say Jesteś niezastąpiona. Something you can use to your coworker, to your friend, um, even if you are a boss, you can use it uh, um, to all your workers. Something that will make everybody feel better about themselves. So you can just simply say, Jesteś niezastąpiony. Or, Jesteś niezastąpiona. Woohoo! You know what? Zaskoczyłeś mnie pozytywnie. You surprised me positively. Which is a good way to a uh, compliment on somebody's job, well done, or that somebody acted in a very, very good way or a very wise way. And you can say it to your friends, you can say it to your co-workers, basically almost everybody, uh, unless this person is uh, very, very much above you in a hierarchy, maybe that's not a good idea, but everybody else is okay, fine, and people will be super happy to hear that. So that's all for today. Once again, my name is Marzena, and today we did 10 compliments you always want to hear. So what are the compliments you want to hear? Leave it in comments and remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel and visit polishpod101.com for more content like that. See ya! Nice. Oh, oh, I hate it. I hate it, Mom. Okay, let's do it. Want to finally learn Polish the fast, fun, and easy way? In this video, I'll show you the top 10 ways to get started. So let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. Access any audio or video lesson on polishpod101.com and just press the play button to get started. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign-up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds, and it's free. 
we have thousands of audio and video lessons covering a variety of topics like grammar, pronunciation, listening, and reading. Just click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, read along with the lesson. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript. These come with every lesson. The lesson notes provide you with the dialogue for the scene taught in the lesson, along with translations, a more in-depth explanation of the grammar and culture, and even vocab and sample sentences. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear in the lesson. And the dialogue study tool provides you with the audio for the lesson dialogue, along with the translations. Number three, shadowing. Shadowing is a tested learning technique where you repeat what you hear. This is a great way to start speaking in minutes and practice speaking in general. If you're listening along with the lesson audio or dialogue, be sure to shadow along the way. Number four, use the dialogue study tool to master the conversation. Here, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation demonstrated in the lesson. Listen and repeat until you've mastered each line. Do this until you've mastered the entire conversation. Number five, Use the voice recorder to perfect your pronunciation and speaking. In the dialogue study tool, you'll find a microphone icon next to each line. Click on it to record your voice. Then, compare it with the native speakers. Listen and adjust your pronunciation until you match that of the native speaker. Number six, review vocab with the lesson vocabulary list. Vocabulary words are the building blocks of language. You can save vocab words taught in each lesson by clicking on Add to Word Bank. Want to drill the words with smart flashcards instead? Just click on Add to Flashcard Deck to do so. Number seven, listen to the review track. If you've studied an audio lesson before, just listen to the review track so that you don't have to listen through the entire lesson again. This is a great way to reinforce the material that you've learned and it's great to have on the go. Just access any audio lesson and click on the download icon. Then click review to download the review track. Number eight, review with quizzes after the lesson. Once you're confident enough with the material taught in the lesson, be sure to take the quiz to test your newfound knowledge. Take the review questions and answer true or false for each one. Or take the writing questions and input your answer. Remember to check the answers by clicking on the check answers button. Number nine, participate and leave a comment. The best way to master what you've learned is to use it. Join the community of learners by leaving a comment below at the end of every lesson. Our dedicated teachers will check your responses to correct you on any mistakes or provide you with helpful study tips and advice. And finally, number 10, move on to the next lesson. Done with a lesson? Mark the lesson as complete. You can see your overall learning progress on your dashboard. If you particularly enjoyed the lesson, mark the lesson as favorite so that you can come back to it later at any time. Click on the forward arrow to move on to the next lesson and continue learning. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn Polish and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. Remember, you can sign up to polishpod101.com by clicking on the link in the description. Sign up takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. I'll see you next time, bye. Want to speak real Polish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at polishpod101.com. Hello everyone, my name is Marzena. Welcome to Top Polish Words. Today we will learn 20 travel phrases you should know. So here we go. Czy mógłbym dostać mapę? Could I get a map? So imagine uh, you are in a new place and you go to the information center and you want a map. So uh, you will ask, can I get a map? And in Polish, you will ask, czy mógłbym dostać mapę? Czy mógłbym dostać mapę? Czy mógłbym dostać mapę? Could I get a map? Or if you are a girl, you will ask, czy mogłabym dostać mapę? Czy mogłabym dostać mapę? Again, could I get a map? Czy mógłbym dostać mapę? Czy mogłabym dostać mapę? Czy mówisz po angielsku? Do you speak English? Now you're wandering around and you want to ask for the way and you see somebody. Um, and you want to ask them if they speak English. So you want to ask, do you speak English? Do you speak English? In Polish you would say, 
Czy mówisz po angielsku? Czy mówisz po angielsku? And I guess this is the easiest way to say that, but not the nicest way, because actually mówisz, so do you, you speak English, uh, it's something you will use for, with your friends, with somebody close to you, and for a person, for a person you don't know, it's better to say sir or ma'am. So in Polish you will say, if it's a guy, czy mówi pan po angielsku? Czy mówi pan po angielsku? And if it's a girl, czy mówi pani po angielsku? Czy mówi pani po angielsku? Czy mówi pan po angielsku? Czy mówi pani po angielsku? But if you want to do it the easy way, nobody will get angry at you. They will know that you are not so good at Polish, that you are still trying to figure stuff out, and you can easily say, czy mówisz po angielsku? Czy mówisz po angielsku? Czy jest autobus z lotniska do miasta? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Now, imagine you just arrived and you're at the airport and you want to ask around how to get to the city center. You're looking for a bus and you want to ask, is there a bus from the airport to the city center? You can just uh, say, czy jest autobus z lotniska do miasta? Czy jest autobus z lotniska do miasta? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? And I can tell you in Warsaw, yes, there is. <laughs> there is also a very convenient train, by the way. Czy Wi-Fi jest darmowe? Is the Wi-Fi free? When you are traveling, you usually want to connect to the internet. And you are looking for Wi-Fi, and you are looking for a free Wi-Fi, and you want to ask if the Wi-Fi is free. You can ask in Polish, czy Wi-Fi jest darmowe? Czy Wi-Fi jest darmowe? Is the Wi-Fi free? Czy Wi-Fi jest darmowe? Actually, if you go and ask, czy Wi-Fi jest darmowe, people will not understand you. So you have to change the Wi-Fi pronunciation. Even though the word is the same, the spelling is the same, you have to change Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi. So if you're looking for a free Wi-Fi, remember you can ask, is the Wi-Fi free? Czy Wi-Fi jest darmowe. Um, by the way, you will find it very easily everywhere, almost everywhere the, the, you will have uh, free Wi-Fi. You are walking the street, uh, in the city center, in almost, I think every coffee shop, actually, not almost every, but every coffee shop, every hotel, uh, basically everywhere. Czy mają państwo wolne pokoje na dzisiaj? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Now, imagine you're looking for an accommodation and you see a hotel, you walk in and you want to ask, do you have any vacancies tonight? Do you have any vacancies tonight? In Polish, you would say, czy mają państwo wolne pokoje na dzisiaj? Do you have vacancies tonight? Czy mają państwo wolne pokoje na dzisiaj? Which means wolne pokoje, wolne pokoje, if you want to translate it literally, it means free rooms, not for free, but free as a, you know, uh, n nobody there. But um, this is what we say in Polish uh, for vacancies. Czy mają państwo wolne pokoje na dzisiaj? Czy mają państwo wolne pokoje na dzisiaj? Do you have vacancies tonight? Czy mógłbym się przenieść do innego pokoju? Could I move to a different room? Now imagine you are already in your room and then something is broken, something is not working and you want to ask if you can move to another room. What you would say in Polish is Czy mógłbym się przenieść do innego pokoju? Czy mógłbym się przenieść do innego pokoju? Could I move to a different room? But that's if you are a guy, czy mógłbym. If you are a girl, you would say czy mogłabym. Czy mógłbym? Czy mogłabym? Czy mógłbym się przenieść do innego pokoju? Czy mogłabym się przenieść do innego pokoju? Could I move to a different room? Mam rezerwację. I have a reservation. Now, if you're one of those lucky persons who actually booked everything and then you just arrive and you have everything uh, organized, uh, you arrive at the hotel and you want to say, I have a reservation. Uh, in Polish, you would say, Mam rezerwację. Mam rezerwację. I have a reservation. Mam rezerwację. Or, for example, you can add for today. 
mam rezerwację na dzisiaj. Or if you are calling them and you want to say, oh, I have a reservation for tomorrow, but I will arrive late or something like that, you can say, mam rezerwację na jutro. Mam rezerwację na jutro. Uh, or if you want to say, I have a reservation for uh, September 15th, you can say, mam rezerwację na 15 września. So there is this uh, preposition na. Mam rezerwację na, and then the date comes. It can be a date or a day, like jutro, tomorrow. Czy moglibyśmy prosić o menu? Could we have the menu, please? And imagine you enter in a restaurant. Um, depends on the country. Sometimes you have to ask for things. Sometimes the waiter or waitress will just bring everything to you. Um, in Poland, I think uh, in a lot of places you will wait long, long, long time before they bring everything. So it's better to ask. And for example, if you want to have the menu and you want to say, could we have the menu, please? In Polish, you will say, czy moglibyśmy prosić o menu? Czy moglibyśmy prosić o menu? Um, there is a Polish word for menu, which uh, you will say, well, in Polish, uh, karta dań, karta, karta dań, karta dań, but we don't use it very often. So usually just menu is okay. Czy moglibyśmy prosić o menu? Ma pan jakieś rekomendacje? Do you have any recommendations? Now, uh, imagine you are staying at a hotel and you want to walk around, you want to see new places, uh, but you don't really know where to go and you want to ask for the recommendation. What you would say to a guy is Ma pan jakieś rekomendacje? Ma pan jakieś rekomendacje? And to a girl, you would say Ma pani jakieś rekomendacje? Ma pani jakieś rekomendacje? Do you have any recommendations? It can be either about sightseeing or, or when you are when you already have this menu and you are ordering something and you don't know what Polish food is like and which is good, which is bad, which is the, the most traditional one. You just ask the waiter or waitress. Czy ma pan jakieś rekomendacje? Czy ma pani jakieś rekomendacje? Do you have any recommendations? Czy mogę prosić o rachunek? Could I have the check, please? Now, when you finish and you want to get the bill and just go, and you want to ask, could I have the check, please? In Polish, you would say, czy mogę prosić o rachunek? Czy mogę prosić o rachunek? Could I have the check, please? Could I have the check, please? Czy mogę prosić o rachunek? Czy mogę prosić o rachunek? Where rach rachunek, rachunek means bill or check. Czy mogę prosić o rachunek? Jestem uczulony na orzeszki ziemne. I'm allergic to peanuts. Now, when you have some allergies, it's very important to tell your waiter or waitress uh, that you have them because sometimes they can prepare a um, dish that can actually be very dangerous for you. So if you want to say I'm allergic to peanuts, you will say Jestem uczulony na orzeszki ziemne. Jestem uczulony na orzeszki ziemne. And if you have any other allergies, you will just say Jestem uczulony na and then add the allergy. So Jestem uczulony na orzeszki ziemne is one of the examples. Uh, now, if you are a girl, you will change it a little bit. You will say, instead of uczulony, you will say uczulona. So, instead of saying, jestem uczulony na orzeszki ziemne, you will say, jestem uczulona na orzeszki ziemne. Poproszę wodę. Water, please. In many countries, uh, in restaurant, water is for free. In Poland, actually, it's not for free, but you can order it, of course. And uh, when you want to say water, please, in Polish you would say poproszę wodę, water, please, poproszę wodę. Which, remember, you will be charged for it. Ile to kosztuje? How much is this? It's never good to buy something if you don't know the price. And uh, same goes for Poland, especially if you go and buy something in a bazaar, they can cheat you, they can charge you extra, so it's always better to ask first. 
And uh, to do so, you just say, ile to kosztuje? Ile to kosztuje? How much is this? How much is this? Ile to kosztuje? Wezmę to. I would like this. Now, um, even if you don't know the Polish name, you can always uh, point at something and say, I would like this. Now, how to say it in Polish? In Polish, you would say, wezmę to. I would like this. Wezmę to. Just simply point at the thing and say, wezmę to. I would like this. Wezmę to. Which literally means, I will take this. Wezmę to. Czy dostanę zniżkę? Could you give me a discount? It is not so uncommon, not so unheard of to, to just bargain, especially when you are buying on the street, um, at bazaar, uh, in a big shop, not so much. Uh, but you can always try to ask for a discount if you are buying a bigger amount. So if you want to ask, could you give me a discount? In Polish you would say, Czy dostanę zniżkę? Czy dostanę zniżkę? Could you give me a discount? Czy dostanę zniżkę? Czy akceptują Państwo karty kredytowe? Do you take credit cards? Now, a lot of people travels with no cash on them. It's easier. It's more efficient. Even if you lose your credit card, you can always block it. You can always delete it probably undo transactions, some transactions, uh, but it's also very important to ask if they actually accept credit cards in the place where you are going to. And in Poland, I think most places does, or I guess almost all places does, uh, but it's also uh, a good practice to, to just ask about it. And if you want to say, do you take credit card? Do you take credit card? In Polish would be Czy akceptują Państwo karty kredytowe? Czy akceptują Państwo karty kredytowe? Czy akceptują Państwo karty kredytowe? Do you take credit card? Przepraszam, gdzie jest stacja kolejowa? Excuse me, where is the train station? And if you are walking around the street and you want to find the train station, let's say, or anything else, you can use the same sentence actually to anything else. Uh, you can stop somebody saying, przepraszam, which is something like, excuse me, and then adding, gdzie jest stacja kolejowa? Przepraszam, gdzie jest stacja kolejowa? Which in English would mean, excuse me, where is the train station? Przepraszam, gdzie jest stacja kolejowa? Excuse me, where is the train station? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet? Excuse me, how much is the ticket? So you just say, excuse me, how much is the ticket? In Polish you would say, przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet? Excuse me, how much is the ticket? And of course, uh, it can be an entrance ticket as well, or... Um, a train ticket, and if it's a train ticket from place A to place B, uh, you can ask, przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet do? And then add the name of your destination. For example, przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet do Krakowa? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet do Warszawy? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet do Opola? Przepraszam, ile kosztuje bilet do Wrocławia? And so on and so on. Czy mógłby pan zrobić mi zdjęcie? Could you take a picture of me, please? Traveling alone is a great thing, but if you want to take a picture, well, you can take a selfie and you can use a selfie stick, but it's not always so great. So sometimes it's better to just stop somebody and ask, could you take a picture of me, please? Which in Polish you would say, czy mógłby pan zrobić mi zdjęcie? Czy mógłby pan zrobić mi zdjęcie? If the person you ask is a guy. But if it's a girl, you would say Czy mogłaby pani zrobić mi zdjęcie? Czy mogłaby pani zrobić mi zdjęcie? Czy ten autobus jedzie na lotnisko? Is this the right bus for the airport? Now imagine you are going to the airport and you see a bus, but you are not sure if it's going to the airport. So what would you ask in Polish? Czy ten autobus jedzie na lotnisko? Czy ten autobus jedzie na lotnisko? Is this the right bus for the airport? 
Czy ten autobus jedzie na lotnisko? And I guess most people will be more than happy uh, to help you. Czy ten autobus jedzie na lotnisko? Is this the right bus to the airport? That's all for today. Thank you for watching. Today we learned 20 travel phrases you should know. Are there any other travel phrases you want to know? Please leave us a comment. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and go to polishpod101.com for more content like that. Thank you again and see ya! Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Hello everyone, my name is Marzena. Welcome to Top Polish Words. Today we will learn 15 must-know family words. Are you ready? Rodzina, family. You may know another word which is very similar to rodzina. Rodzić, rodzić, to give birth to, rodzić, or another one, urodziny, birthday. So it's all related to, to giving birth, uh, to birthday, all that stuff. That's because rodzina, that's the family, is actually, you know, a group of people that are connected with birth. That's why rodzina, very similar to rodzić. Rodzić, rodzina, family. For example, you can say Masz bardzo dużą rodzinę. Masz bardzo dużą rodzinę. You have a very large family. Masz bardzo dużą rodzinę. And having a large family in Poland is actually pretty common. Having two, three, four kids. Uh, my aunt has like three daughters, three uh, sons, six kids total. I myself, I'm an only child, but uh, I guess it is very common to have at least two kids in Poland. Ojciec, father. Mój ojciec jest architektem. My father is an architect. Which is actually true about my father. Mój ojciec jest architektem. In some languages you have different words for, for father uh, when you use it um, with uh, others and then when you use it with your dad and so on. Uh, in Poland, no, not really, ojciec. Uh, to your dad, you probably wouldn't say ojciec or ojcze. Uh, you will say, uh, so you wouldn't say father, you will say dad. And that in Polish, it's tato, tato, tato. Easy, so kids can pronounce it too. Tato. Mąż, husband. For example, you can say, podobno jej mąż jest policjantem. Podobno jej mąż jest policjantem. Apparently her husband is a police officer. Podobno jej mąż jest policjantem. Syn, son. So uh, usually you will say syn, but if it's a small kid, you will rather use synek. So for smaller kids, synek. 
And you can, for example, say Mój synek ma już 10 lat. Mój synek ma już 10 lat. My son is already 10 years old. Brat, brother. So, for example, if you have only one brother, you can say Mam jednego starszego brata. Mam jednego starszego brata. I have one older brother. Family in Poland is very important and of course so is your brother or your sister. And, uh, well, I myself, I don't have any, but I know that uh, people get really attached to uh, their siblings and uh, they visit them often, they talk off very often. So in some countries it's not so common, but in Poland, yes, it is. Wujek, Anka, you can say, for example, Wujek już z nami nie mieszka. Uncle doesn't live with us anymore. Um, funny thing about Polish uncles and aunts as well. So basically everyone, everybody around you is an uncle or an aunt. So for example, if my friend has a baby, uh, she will refer to me because we are friends as an, un uh, as an aunt. And for example, she will refer to, to my boyfriend as an uncle. And even though we are not really aunt and uncle, because that's, that's the way it is in Poland. So every kid in Poland has like 100 aunts and 100 uncles. It's just, just the way we are keeping it a very, very big family. Dziadek, grandfather. Ah, uh, for example, if you do something stupid, you can probably hear your mom or your grandma saying, Co by na to twój dziadek powiedział? What would your grandfather say about this? Teść, father-in-law. Almost like cześć, cześć. Only a little bit different. Teść, teść. So if you are the lucky one, you can say Mój teść nie jest taki najgorszy. My father-in-law is not so bad. Mój teść nie jest taki najgorszy. Matka, mother. But same as father, you will not say to your mom Mother. You will not say matka. They can feel offended even. You will say mama, mama. So uh, when you are asking something, you can say, Mamo, możemy iść jutro do zoo? Mom, can we go to zoo tomorrow? Córka, daughter. And similar as syn or son, uh, when he or she, he is little, you say synek. And for córka you say córeczka, córeczka. You can, for example, say mam dwie córeczki, which basically means I have two daughters. Siostra, sister. Moja siostra pracuje w urzędzie miejskim. My sister works at the town hall. Żona, wife. So you probably know the word ona, ona, she, ona. So just add ż, żona. Ona, żona, żona, żona. And you can ask, for example, Gdzie jest twoja żona? Where is your wife? Teściowa, mother-in-law. So, father-in-law was, once again, teść. And here we've got mother-in-law, which is teściowa. Jutro jedziemy do teściowej. We are going tomorrow to visit the mother-in-law. And that can be very scary jutro. Jutro jedziemy do teściowej. We are going tomorrow to visit the mother-in-law. Babcia, grandmother, or grandpa will be dziadek as well. And grandmother or grandma is babcia, babcia. And Polish grandmothers, oh my God, they can cook you like the whole fridge and you will get stuffed and then you won't be able to walk anymore and then she will be asking, oh, are you, are you, are you okay? You sure you don't want any more? Like, I have like this, this, and this, and this, and then help yourself with this. And five minutes later, she will be serving you another meal. Um, that's basically what it usually happens every single Polish house. For example, you can say, Moja babcia skończyła wczoraj 80 lat. My grandma turned 80 yesterday. Ciocia, aunt. And as I already said, every single female around your kid will be this kid's ciocia. So, uh, like my, my friend, he has a four years old daughter and she knows that I'm her ciocia. Although I'm not a ciocia at all. Like we, we basically know, have known each other for like maybe only four years. Doesn't matter. We don't have any relationship, any, anything. Uh, but I'm her ciocia. 
because uh, that's what, what we usually do. Uh, we call everybody around ciocia or wujek. And for example, you can say, ciocia cię bardzo kocha. Auntie loves you very much. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Today we learned 15 must know family words. How large is your family? Please leave us a comment. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and go to polishpod101.com for more videos like this. See ya! Hello everybody! Welcome to Top Polish Words. My name is Marzena and today we will learn top 10 phrases tourists should never use. So here we go! To jest obrzydliwe. That's disgusting. To jest obrzydliwe. To jest obrzydliwe. To jest obrzydliwe means it's disgusting. And I guess you would never like anybody to say uh, that about your, for example, traditional food. So I never met anybody who would say something like that about Polish food or Polish traditions, or at least not into my face, but I would feel very bad if somebody did. And I guess there is a lot of different countries where you can go and with a lot of food that looks disgusting, but, but still you shouldn't say that because those people are eating that and it's like for them it's for something traditional or something like they eat every day. And I, I bet you wouldn't like to hear it either. Uh, so please don't do it. Don't do it in Poland or in any other country. Mój kraj jest lepszy. My country is better. Hmm. Mój kraj jest lepszy. Mój kraj jest lepszy. Which means my country is better. Obviously, a big no-no. Please avoid it. Avoid it in Poland. Avoid it in any other country. Um, me as a Polish person, I wouldn't like to hear that. And especially for, I mean, especially from, uh, people from neighboring countries, because we tend to, you know, try to get better and better and better. And we tend to try to get better than other countries around us. And of course, everybody else is doing the same thing, but you never ever verbalize that, like ever, like don't say it. Wolałabym wrócić do domu. I would rather be back home. Wolałabym wrócić do domu. Hmm. Wolałabym wrócić do domu. So if you are a girl, you will actually say that. If you are a guy, you may try saying wolałbym wrócić do domu. So wolałabym, wolałbym. But what does it mean? Well, it means that I would rather be back home. And yeah, imagine hearing that in your country, like you will feel just sad when people say that this means that they really don't like it here. And that's something that's a very rude thing to say. And you may hurt a lot of people around you. So please don't do it ever. Big no. Zamknij się. Shut up. Okay, so the next one is not only for tourists, but in general, we shouldn't say that phrase. And it's zamknij się. Zamknij się. Which literally it means close yourself, but basically we use it as a shut up. Zamknij się. And obviously that's not a nice thing to say, not, not even to your friends. And it's very rude. And even your best friends with, with whom you are very close and maybe it's okay to say in English, but in Polish, no. People will just get angry at you. So please try to avoid this one, but know what it means because you may hear it from somebody else and that's the point where you should be angry at this person. Nie interesuje mnie twoja kultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. Another big no-no when you're in a foreign country is Nie interesuje mnie twoja kultura. Nie interesuje mnie twoja kultura. Which basically means I'm not interested in your culture. And that's the point when you're asking yourself, why are you even here? Uh, if you are not interested in it and why don't you just get back home and basically you feel offended, you feel maybe attacked because your culture or whatever you are living in, 
like your everyday life, your everyday culture, uh, things, small things you do every day. It's, it, it's obviously very important to your, to all the people around you. And if somebody says, well, I have no interest in that, like do whatever or be whatever, that's something, that's the point where you can really hurt people. So please don't do it. Nie lubię poznawać nowych ludzi. I don't like meeting new people. Another one is not so much for a tourist as for a person just meeting new people where, well, I guess if you are a tourist, you will meet a lot of new people and that's, and that's the point where you shouldn't use this phrase. Nie lubię poznawać nowych ludzi. Nie lubię poznawać nowych ludzi. Which basically means I, I don't like meeting new people. And if you are telling it to a person you've just met, well, that's a big faux pas you shouldn't make. So please try to avoid it. Zjedzmy w McDonaldzie. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Another one that is a big no-no is Zjedzmy w McDonaldzie. Zjedzmy w McDonaldzie. Which means Let's just eat at McDonald's. And yes, of course, if you are going to another country, people would like you to try their own food. And the same is in Poland. And the same goes anywhere you go. So like, for example, one of my Polish friends, he came to Japan and, you know, Japan, amazing food. And he was eating McDonald's every day and spending much more money than he should on it because it's actually pretty expensive. And he never ever tried like this good Japanese food. So I guess all the people he knew from Japan, they felt a little bit offended. And it would be the same for me from Poland. So if you come to Poland and you are like, ah, I will not try Polish food. Like, let's just eat too. Let's just go to McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Like, why? Why are you even here? Why don't you want to like get to know new culture, right? So please try to avoid this. Nudy. Boring. Nudy. Nudy or nudy means boring. And that's something you don't want to say, not even like as a tourist, but as a friend or, or if you go to Polish home or I mean Polish house or or whenever you talk to Polish people, you are sitting around anybody who can understand Polish and you say like, oh, oh it's so boring, nude, nude. No, <laughs> that's something you don't want to do ever. And that's, that's goes the same in any other language, I guess. And not even if you are a tourist, but if you're like in your own country and just speaking with somebody who speaks Polish, please don't do this. Not good. To smakuje okropnie. This tastes awful. Mm, to smakuje okropnie. To smakuje okropnie. To smakuje okropnie means this tastes awful. This tastes awful. Yeah, something again, something you wouldn't like to tell somebody, especially if this person, your Polish friend, cooked you a, a wonderful dinner. And you, you got this opportunity to try all this different Polish, uh, food. And then you are like, ah, to smakuje okropnie. No, not a good thing to do in any country, uh, Polish or Poland included. Zostanę dzisiaj w hotelu. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. Another one that somebody may actually feel offended is, zostanę dzisiaj w hotelu. Zostanę dzisiaj w hotelu. I'm going to spend a day in the hotel. So yes, obviously, zostanę dzisiaj w hotelu is something you wouldn't like to hear if you are like, I mean, if your friend comes to your country and you want to show them like everything and you prepared everything and you've got this whole one day schedule, sightseeing schedule and they say, nah, today I'll just stay at the hotel. Zostanę dzisiaj w hotelu. And I would just eat at McDonald's. I would just, yeah, uh, zjem w McDonald's. I will eat at McDonald's. 
And this is, you know, showing that you have no interest whatsoever in the country you just came to. And it's a very bad way to start a relationship with, with a country like that or with a person from that country. A big no-no. Please don't do it. Thank you for watching. Today we learned top 10 phrases tourists should never use. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, go to polishpod101.com for more videos like that. And let us know in the comments what kind of phrases a tourist should never use in your country. So thank you for watching and see you again! I'm not very interested in your culture. Mm. So why you are here? <laughs> yeah, they are giving me money, so I'm here. Um, I said a tourist, not tourists. Uh -huh. Should okay. I be yeah. killed for that and do it again? <laughs> Hello everybody! <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> <laughs> and bye bye! <laughs> okay. okay. Well Top 10 phrases tourists should never use. And Fuenki. <laughs> Fuenki. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to like this video and go to Polish Pod 1. Hey everyone, welcome to your monthly review. The monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn, one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining. No bad news. But you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good. You're excited. But as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much. And this affects your mood and motivation. So you're not as excited to learn anymore. So you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad. But that's completely natural, and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part. Why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. 
If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger, and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement, and it doesn't matter if you do a 10-minute lesson or a 5-minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one-minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode. So a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to set achievable language learning goals and resolutions. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time, bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.